This is Candor Talk. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get right into the show. But before we get into the show, don't forget to check out our website, sylviaexpress.com. Hey, fabulous people. How are you doing on this wonderful Saturday? Well, wonderful for some of us, terrible for some others. And let me just get right into this is Candor Talk. And look, Trump is in a very abusive relationship with his base. He's the abuser and they are the victims in this scenario, at least some of them. And, you know, in an abusive relationship, you will find that the victims are constantly rationalizing the abhorrent conduct. They'll be like, he beat me up. He broke five of my ribs, broke my jaw, strangled me until I was unconscious. But I took him back because he swore it would never happen again. That's the type of relationship that Trump has with his supporters. It's toxic, cultish, and abusive. However, even in abusive relationships, some people have their limits. The base that was still there after the omnibus failure, they fractured again. This time, the vitriol isn't isn't relenting. It is unbelievable. You have to go check out sylviaexpress.com on Monday. Wow. But anyway, there will be those, as always, that will defend the abomination. There are those that literally would rationalize if Trump committed murder. They'd be like, he said he didn't do it, and I believe him. All they have is his confession, a video of him doing it, his fingerprints all over the victim, a crime scene, and 18 witnesses. But I know Trump. He's not that kind of person. Look, there's no hope for those kind of people, right? There's no point in trying to save them. There's no hope for them. It's over. They have subscribed to the cultish lifestyle. There's nothing anyone can do. But... However, those are, there actually are those ones that wanted him to live up to his campaign promises. No matter how abominable those promises were, they still wanted him to live up to them, live up to them. So the thing is, even though he's abusing them, every abuser always goes too far. The vocal ones, the white supremacists and the alt light, they are enraged. Even Alex Jones said the unthinkable about Trump. Okay, for somebody who has been carrying water for Trump for so long, you have got to hear what I'm about to play that he said about Trump. And the the, the volume of this isn't very good because it's recorded from somewhere else, but you have to hear what he says. It's unbelievable. Here it is. Okay, did you hear him? He said, fuck you, Trump. Okay, fuck your family. That was Alex Jones. And then here's another rant from Alex Jones. I'm just, because I'm going to show you guys in this, in this show today how bad things are for Trump. Here's another rant from Alex Jones about Donald Trump. Literally, Donald Trump water boy. Here's Alex Jones. Live on Twitter? I'm live on Twitter right here. And All right, this it's Friday night. Live. We just did... 34 hours live. We're getting ready to go live on the main feeds on InfoWars. It's freaking emergency. Trump has absolutely crapped all over us. He's been totally compromised, blackmailed. There's no damn doubt about it. And we got Zach, our Intel source from Space Command, Geospatial Center, joining us. Let's kill that Mattis feed. Okay. You know, Trump did this on Friday night and only hit like five targets instead of 70 uh, as some type of appeasement to the globalists and everything else. This is total horseshit. So... Um, look, I, I'm going to straight shoot you. Trump did good on TPP and all, everything else. This is BS, man. I mean, the damn rebels are Al-Qaeda, ISIS. They launched the chemical attacks. They've been caught three times before. And I'm not going to sell out my morals for fucking Donald Trump, God damn it. See, I can't even go live. I'm so fucking pissed right now. Why don't you just kill that feed? Just go back to another live feed, dude. Okay. Um, uh, just just kill, kill the fucking feed. All right. uh, Kill it, just fucking kill it, and let's. Okay, so this guy was like live on his feed, just literally going off, rambling about all kinds of things about Trump. Okay, we're talking about I'm not gonna compromise my beliefs for Trump. Okay, no one told you you were you had to. You did though. I mean, if you had any, nobody knows anyway. But then, oh my God, this part of the Alex Jones situation is epic. I have to play this part. Here it is. 
He's actually, anyway, let me just play it. Here it is. You know, stop supporting Trump. And it's the opposite of what my ex-wife says. She says, you know, oh, the system took the kids away from me. No, you got the kids back because of who I was part of the time. And then they sit there and they're like, you know, if you just turn against Trump, things will be better. But he was doing good. And that what makes it so bad. Oh, and that's what makes it so bad. If he'd have been a piece of crap from the beginning, it would be so bad. But we made so many sacrifices. And now he's crapping all over us. It makes me sick. Okay, so the dude, the dude that was sitting beside him in the video, the dude that was sitting beside him was like, um, uh, uh, should I pat you on the back now or... Do you need a tissue? Like, I don't know what to say. Like, Alex Jones was literally crying. That is how much he feels betrayed. He It literally brought him to tears. And it wasn't just Alex Jones. It There's so many of them. I'm going to play with Cernovich, who was literally one of those people who has all these followers, who helped put Trump in office, helped to put together things like the Deplora Ball and all these other things. Listen to what Cernovich is saying about Trump after the Syria uh, strikes. Here it is. Totally worth it, right? All those friendships you lost, the violence in the streets, all totally worth it, right? I mean, come on. How, how many people here supported Trump lost a friend over Trump? How many people here have lost friends over Trump. Some people lost jobs. Some people, you know, a lot of people lost, uh, a lot of people lost for Trump. And um, how's it feel? Totally worth it, right? World War III with Syria. How many civilians are going to die tonight? People who yelled at me and screamed at me, F you. Because I told you, I knew what was happening before everybody else did. General Flynn lost his home. People lost friends. But hey, never Trump and Hillary Clinton got their war. Good job. I don't care if he gets impeached. What, what do I care now? If we're going to go to war, why in the world would I care? What? Okay, so you hear I'm talking about impeachment. I don't even care if he gets impeached. That's a sentiment that's being carried a long way across the border with uh, Trump base. You have to go check out SylviaExpress.com on Monday. I am telling you, wait till you hear the thing. Some of the stuff that they're saying, though, is so weird. It's like, you're mad about what exactly? I don't get it. I'm confused. But you know what? The fact that you're mad at him is good for me. That's all I care about. The fact that you guys, there's this exodus from his base because this guy needs to go. He needs to go. And it wasn't just Alex Jones. It wasn't just Cernovich. It was also Michael Savage. Here's Michael Savage on the biggest betrayal they feel like Trump executed so far. Here it is. I know you're all pouring in and you want to hear my opinion. Do I have to tell you what my opinion is? My opinion is very clear. My opinion is very clear, which is this is the greatest disaster of the Trump presidency. And it's purely wagged the door. There was no reason for this. None whatsoever. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, General Mattis said there was no evidence that Syria had done it. And all of a sudden, they're launching Tomahawk missiles. This is a disaster. It is not about me. Nothing to do with Michael. It's to do with America. I am ashamed to be an American tonight, to see that we've become a nation of idiots that would let this go on and sit here and cheer. Who is cheering him tonight? Sean Hannity, sitting there saying, great, rah, rah, sis, boom, bah. Am I the only one who sees the absurdity of this whack the dog war? Okay, so you can hear a lot of what he was saying, some of the stuff that he was saying, because he was at dinner basically recording that, um, what, what actually, trans his feelings on what transpired there. But you're hearing him saying basically it's a wag the dog operation, because what they're basically saying is that Trump used this as a distraction. And let me just say something. I believe that the strikes in Syria were unconstitutional. He needed to go to Congress and get support from Congress before he did it. I also don't believe that we should be in perpetual war in the Middle East. I don't really understand the purpose of perpetual war in the Middle East. And even somebody in the United States 
who committed a crime like that, allegedly committed a crime like that, where they basically gas people in the United States, that person would still be entitled to due process. So we decide to go into another country and start to exact revenge on, on somebody, a leader of a sovereign nation, without due process? With, they're saying, look, I didn't do it. Assad is saying, I didn't do it. So therefore, what we, why did we need to immediately retaliate against a sovereign nation? There's nothing about this that was not wag the dog. It was to change the headlines because James Comey came out with a bombshell book about Donald Trump, which I'm not going to get into in this broadcast because I have to actually close this broadcast early today because I have a lot of work to do. So I need to get back to that. But I'm not going to talk about that. But what was the purpose of this after your lawyer gets raided too? And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But nevertheless, Trump's base is so upset about this. And honestly, anybody who was anti-war should be upset about this. There was no logical reason for him to do this at this particular time. If, if you're not, They were actually bringing inspectors in today to basically check to determine whether or not Assad had actually had chemical weapon. I mean, chemical weapons and chemical um, chemicals, excuse me, that he could use to attack his people, gas and stuff like that. They were going to check that today. So what was the urgency? Oh, it's interesting. It's quite convenient. After Comey's book comes out, your lawyer gets raided. All of a sudden, you want to strike serious. So anyway, Trump's base decided to start this hashtag calling him Neocon Don. I'm telling you, like I said, go check SylviaExpress.com on Monday. But, you know, when I say that things are bad for Trump, I'm never being hyperbolic. I'm analyzing the evidence and making an assessment based on the facts, not my wishes. If it were left up to me, the imposter would have been relieved of his duties on January 20th, 2017. But he's in serious trouble right now, and he knows it. And that's the reason why we decided to invade Syria. That's the reason why we decided to do that. And people who keep on saying, oh, it wasn't war. He didn't declare war. I'm, you're right. Those were love strikes. Those were strikes of love. He was just dropping rainbows and fireworks on Syria. Grow up. And let me just tell you something right now. I can summarize Trump's plight real quickly. One, two, Mueller's coming for you. Three, four, they'll be knocking at your door. Ooh, that's what they did to Michael Cohen. That's why they decided to... Anyway, that was like the biggest story this week, and Trump tried to distract from that. And then I'm telling you, nothing so far has been as big as what transpired this week. Michael Cohen was raided by the um, SDNY, their basically federal prosecutors in New York, and it was a no-knock raid, which means they did not have to knock when they came in. And it wasn't Mueller. Mueller made the referral with the approval of Rosenstein. Then the SDNY got a sneak warrant and raided Michael Cohen's um, law office, his house, his safe deposit box, and his hotel. I mean, they went everywhere. And look, I've been practicing law for 11 years. I've met and I know a lot of lawyers. I've never, not even once, known one that was raided or even investigated for criminal conduct. For prosecutors to get a warrant to search the personal lawyer of the President of the United States, and I should say alleged because we're still alleging, if the prosecutors, for them to get that, they better have serious, compelling evidence to request it. There must have been evidence that there is a probable cause that a crime was committed. But to raid an attorney, that doesn't happen. There are outlier situations, of course, where lawyers have been raided because they were corrupt royals, lawyers like Cohen, and engaged in criminal conduct, which it seems like Cohen likely did. But to raid a lawyer's office, you better have overwhelming proof of something. And you better narrowly tailor that to not infringe upon the attorney-client privilege. Then, when that lawyer is also the lawyer for the alleged president of the United States, that evidence better be bulletproof. Clearly, the Southern District of New York isn't afraid of Trump, and they believe they have enough evidence of crimes or crimes um, that they can prove. They even got recordings, too, from Michael Cohen's office. Nobody at this point is even pretending anymore that shit didn't just hit the fan. That's the reason why we got the strike in Syria. Even Fox News is like, dude, woo, you're in trouble. Here's Fox News. What's funny, our colleague Stuart Varney just said to me, isn't there an attorney-client protection? And my very quick response to him while you were interviewing Senator Kennedy was, not if there's a serious allegation of unlawful activity 
by the lawyer with the client. Now, remember, this was a... The, the lawyer being Colin, the client being... His only client, the President, the President of the United, United States. States. Right. A little bit of background. Mr. Cohen's office is located on the 26th floor of Trump Tower, right in the midst of the Trump Organization. This is not a traditional, discreet lawyer's office as one would understand it to be. He works for Donald Trump, the person, and the Trump Organization and its various entities. And that, as far as I understand from sources, uh, is all he works for. But we, we know, of course, of the Stormy Daniels uh, allegations, which is... Where could this money have come from? Would it be lawful if it didn't come from Donald Trump? And if it came from Donald Trump, why did the president not acknowledge it? But we know as... Well, actually deny it, that he knew nothing about it. Correct, correct. So there, there must be some evidence presented to a federal judge here in New York City sufficient to uh, persuade that judge to sign a search warrant to permit the FBI in broad daylight to raid an attorney's office particularly when that attorney has one client and it happens to be the president of the United States. That uh, evidence would have to be such as to persuade a neutral observer, the federal judge, that it is more likely than not that among these seized documents is evidence of crimes by Mr. Cohen or Mr. Cohen and the president. Okay, so even Fox News knows that the imposter is in deep shit. The writing is on the wall. I have said this several times. The imposter will not last his entire term. He will either be impeached, resign, or they'll invoke the 25th Amendment. And when I say impeached, I know impeachment is not removal. I know that. However, an impeached president basically ceases to exist as president at that point. So if he's impeached, it's pretty much a game, set, match on his presidency. And that's why I say impeached. But obviously, removal would be way, way better than just a mere impeachment. Of course, that's what we're all looking for. And after what he just did in Syria, which was unconstitutional, he should be impeached. And if you're not looking for his impeachment after what he just did, then you're just probably somebody who's part of the cult 45. But the truth is, there are not many people left in that movement. And if you're still hanging on by a thread, hoping that one day he's going to fulfill all his promises... We're going to get the big, beautiful fence. We're going to get all of the stop and catch and release and all that. We're going to get all of that. And we're going to get all this beautiful infrastructure. And then we aren't going to get any help. I mean, we could go on and on about the fraud. Like, seriously, legitimately, the guy committed a fraud. And then he decided to go and bomb Syria to distract from the fact that his lawyer was raided. His lawyer was raided. And his lawyer, let me just say this right now for the record, for those of you who are MAGA supporters and never want to accept the reality of the situation, his lawyer is likely to get indicted. That's how good their evidence was. That's why they were able to get a warrant. And they didn't just have a warrant to go through those things. They already had a warrant previously to go through his emails. If you don't think they already have him, they do. So he's probably going to get indicted. That will be the closest person to Trump to get indicted. If you don't think Mueller is coming for Trump, oh my God. And now let me just remind you of one more thing. The case is in New York. There's nothing Trump can do about it now. Nothing. You think Mueller didn't set that up? I told you guys from day one that Mueller was going to protect his investigation. He refers the case out to New York. You know why? Because Trump can't stop the case from New York. So on top of him losing his base, the exit is being so great and so vast at this point. He's lost so many people from the omnibus bill disaster. And now he's losing so many people because of serious strikes. I don't see how he survives that. So anyway, guys, I got to end the show early today. I've got a lot of work to do. But watching the implosion of the Trump base and sharing that experience with you guys has been my pleasure. Don't forget to check out SylviaExpress.com. And you guys have a great weekend. See you soon. Take care.